two, one, we are. Farts. Old farts. Two old farts. Steve and Dave. Sometimes you find a diamond in the rough. Not this time, though. This is just rough. Two old farts. There is no better waste of time. Two guys. Two old guys. A lot of BS and more dribble than you can shake a stick at. Steve and Dave. God help. I just think the hat's the best part of that whole thing. Other than, you know, Rob Vega's voice. The hat is the best yeah. part of the whole well, thing. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it was a very hot day, so I don't know why I was wearing the hat. Well, I do, because it got <laughs> plonked. It got, it got plonked on my head. And, uh, I knew uh, it looks good. I mean, look at that yeah, plaque behind you. That's our that's our 100,000 plaque. Look at that. Look at right the, there. That Other one. side. Nice track. There you right go. There. Wow. <laughs> Nice. Well, it is actually that side. I don't know why I pointed to the other side, but uh, it's an age yeah, thing, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. The next size, next side you get is the million plaque. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't think that's going to find its way out of the U.S. for some strange reason. I might have to buy a copy No, no, no. I actually got a postcard from um, YouTube that we can buy plaques after you get your first one. You're allowed to buy oh. – like I could buy another silver one. I could buy a gold one. We could buy whatever we want. Um, and being the cheap Jew that I am, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. We'll just take your free one. So you're right. The million dollar one will just, you know, be over there, over there somewhere. And that's it. Good over there. Yeah. And the there 10 million go. one will be here too. If they have one for a hundred million, I'll give you that one. There you go. Something to look for. Okay. Oh, your generosity is surpassed only by your beauty and charms, David. No, so, uh, no, I've heard that a lot. Talking about beauty yeah. and charm. Our next yeah. guest has uh, no beauty. I don't know. He may be charming. We'll see. Um, but we have a gentleman. His name is Charles. We're going to let him tell him his whole name because I forgot it. Um, because uh, uh, Howard, I think his surname is. Charlie, really? He's got two first names? Oh, this is going to be awesome. This is like Philip Michael Thomas from Miami Vice. All right. They're going to have fun with this. Anyway, um, so we have Charles Howard because he can't make up his mind what his first name is apparently. Um, and he does Salesforce Consulting. I didn't even know anybody still used Salesforce. So this is. Oh, I've, I've seen, I've seen, I am and was an avid user of Salesforce. So really? That'll be, that'll be interesting. Wow. Yeah. I love I'm going to hear about what they, how they consult. Cause I know when I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, when I used it, it was awesome. I enjoyed Salesforce tremendously. Now yeah. I use Zoho. I don't know if Zoho is any better. It's all the same crap to me. Oh, it's, it's probably considerably cheaper, but it's a, a CRMs and CRMs are CRMs, but I'm sure yeah. Charles is going to tell us that that's complete uh, Bolox. Oh no, because he consults for he's a Salesforce cons he's got to yeah. he's got to sell it now. Well, look, well, look, let's let, let's let's get him on Steve uh, Stephen and let him spank okay. us because I think. Well, Ooh, I think, uh, no, no, no! Think, That's at Hilga's House of Pain, and you have to be a member, uh, and only females uh, get to spank me, not males. So uh, okay. I, I can't. Help well, you know, he might get his you CRM go. out for you. You don't know. You have to watch mm -hmm. out. Oh, you never know who he has in his Rolodex. That's a good point. I didn't think of that. Yeah, Charles, welcome to the show. How you doing? Great. How are you guys? Uh, Welcome, another beautiful day in paradise. Yeah. I love so, the intro. To, to... <laughs> you love the intro? That's because you drink heavily and do lots of drugs, which we appreciate. <laughs> um, so so tell us, what do you do? Salesforce consulting. What is that? Do you help just stupid people like me figure out how to punch the buttons? Or do you do the, um, if you will, the install when I purchase it into my network of idiots that would work for me? Yes, we do all of it. We do the install. We okay. help you figure out how to punch the buttons. We build new buttons for you to punch. We hmm. connect it to all kinds of other systems. So when you punch a button, it'll affect other things. Um, we take your older systems and take all your data and move it into Salesforce so you can keep working okay. with it. Um, yeah, build web portals, everything that Salesforce does. That's what Very we cover. Cool. And, before yeah. the show, and before the show, you said you you guys have your own company. It's like 10 or 11 years old? Yeah. About 11 years ago, uh, we were working at a big corporation, seeing all of the craziness that goes on there. And we were seeing the consultants coming in, and none of them were very good. And that seemed to be okay. the industry standard. So right. we're sitting there going, wow, we could really do a lot better. And we want to create a company that provides just much better quality and predictability in projects and delivers things on time and pretty close to the budget and that kind of thing. And so okay. we left our corporate job and started Open Waka. 
Very yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, so walk me through. Like, so I'm going to get now. I know we use something once called Financial Force, which is the spinoff from Salesforce, which is their finance. That model sucks. Um, oh, and then we went to NetSuite. Yeah, that's the worst. We went to NetSuite, and that was really good for finance. But their finance, their financial model is the worst. I've used Salesforce. It's kind of okay. So mm -hmm. if I now do I hire you if I'm going to start looking at different CRMs and just say I want to look at Zoho and Salesforce and this one and that one. Do I have you and I go, Charles, I want to look at these 56 CRMs. Do you say, okay, based on my company needs, these are the five that we'd recommend, or do you guys just do Salesforce um, installations only? So we're just focused in Salesforce. We have okay. uh, helped companies with CRM selection, providing you know detailed information about how Salesforce works beyond what a normal Salesforce sales rep would provide because they have a whole lot of like marketing info and things so sometimes right. dig into the technical details and uh provide like a gap analysis for whether salesforce okay. to people's needs um but yeah we just focus on salesforce actually the reason is that uh, back in 2005 so i first got started with salesforce in 2002 but yeah. uh, at the their big meeting at dreamforce in san francisco and I walked in and there were all these clouds, like big stuffed clouds up on the ceiling of the right. uh, meeting hall. And Mark Benioff got up there and he started talking about how from the beginning, instead of just you know getting a request for a feature from customers and just building the feature into the system, they would try to make the system so that people could customize it to do what they needed it to do. And over right. the years, they realized that they'd built an online platform where people can just run their business processes. So it started off with sales automation, but then people started using it for all kinds of different things. And they came out with Salesforce uh, service pretty closely after that to help run like call centers and stuff. But okay. he, Mark Benioff said that he was talking to his friends at Google and trying to figure out what to call this platform they had had created where people can just run business processes on their servers and on their server clusters and they decided to call it their cloud and that was the first okay. time i ever heard the term cloud computing um and they there's a whole multi-tenant architecture piece to that that made salesforce unique especially back in those days uh, mm -hmm. but when i heard that i went okay this is going to be huge i'm i'm basically just going to focus on this from here on out as far as i can write it and Salesforce is continuing to grow, you know, to this day. Um, and they've always just kept us busy, so we haven't had to do anything else. So does Salesforce refer you clients or you, people just find you because word of mouth is like, you guys are like the Salesforce gurus? Uh, mo yeah, we've gotten a couple of referrals from Salesforce directly, mm -hmm. but mostly it's through our referral program. And we end up with a whole lot of existing clients and customers that refer us to other people because they love what we do very yeah. nice yeah. and so how long does an installation like take with salesforce i know we did netsuites and their finance the others when we did salesforce's financial model it was the installation that they the help they provide and the consultants that showed up were idiots and we literally got rid of it within 30 days and went to netsuites and we had that all installed in, in three months and it worked great so, yeah um how long is your, like, if I say, okay, I want to put Salesforce in my company, because Zoho is easy, right? Zoho and a chimpanzee can do Zoho, which I like, because we hire ch chimpanzees, which is the best, because they only for, they only work for bananas. But if I want to add humans to my Salesforce, then, and if I have Salesforce, how long will it take me to install the Salesforce CRM? It depends on your starting point. It depends on if okay. you're replacing an existing system that has a lot of different things that you need Salesforce to do. Um, if you're a brand new company that's starting up with just a few people and you need a really basic CRM, uh, it could be as little as a month, maybe, okay. or less. Uh, yeah. But that also depends on a whole lot of the timing of projects depends on the availability of the customers and the people at the customer to meet with us and tell us, here's how we do our job. This is what we need to see. Um, yes, we have a plan for where all this data from that we want to see and that kind of thing. Right. So I've been on implementation projects that lasted, you know, a year 
but we were in, we were replacing a large system with you know a couple right. thousand users on it. So, yeah, it's highly. Good. I was I was uh, I worked for a company and, and they asked me to um, uh, advise them of which uh, CRM to do. I've been playing around with CRMs for years, a sales background myself, and um, and I said, well, look, this is if you want to really build out, this is the best way to do it. Salesforce also with the I'm not sponsored by Salesforce, by the way, but I'm a big fan. Mm. Uh, a lot of third-party stuff. It took me uh, right from cold, uh, just about two weeks, I think, to um, to uh, give birth to the to a, a workable system. Let's put it that way, because mm. a lot of it, of course, is um, you know you can, as you well know, Charles, you just pick all the bits that suit you best. And they, the wonderful thing about uh, about Salesforce is they actually click together very nicely. There's a lot of third party stuff. The only issue that I had, apps. sorry, it's all, yeah, it's but, all a, a lot of, but a lot, but a lot, some of the apps are free, some of the apps are third party apps as well, which you have to get, you know, via their, their store. Um, but yeah, the only thing that I struggled with really was uh, the very, very front end of it. So that was then just uh, picking up for people who were picking up the phone. And putting in that first amount of information, um, you know how to interface that with the, with the base with the, the large chunk of the CRM behind it, because this particular client had lots of legacy data, so we were able to load that in company information, personal information, or all the people you know, all their contacts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But to add all the new stuff and to pull it all the way through, I found that uh, quite a challenging. Um, to, to say to say the very least. In fact, in fact, they stopped halfway through because they, they found it too painful. But um... oh yeah, yeah. I'll also say that a lot of the time, the success of a system matters or is way more dependent on how it's implemented than the system yeah. itself. And uh, the thing is that people, like this particular uh, client, kept saying, "Well, I'm happy with what I've got. Why would I need this anyway?" Hmm. So the original argument was, "Look, you know, you're expanding." You're going to various different offices around the world. You need to have this, a larger system that can be accessed from various points and not just on a server stuck in that one office. Um, but yeah, they were just happy with the way that things were. So the legacy software and the, and the should we say, the, the convenience of doing things in a not particularly efficient way, but repetitively over a number of number of years, was the biggest thing that held them back from embracing a completely new system. I don't know if you've experienced that as well with your clients or. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. We're pretty much developers. We want to get in there and build stuff, but we have to navigate things like that and get the right people on board and who are in leadership positions or in decision-making positions so that they can push yeah. things forward and pull people off of old legacy stuff. And then it re I mean, you can build a system and put it out there. Um, but then the question of whether people actually use it is really exactly. a person management yeah. question and a cultural yeah. question. Yeah. So, yeah. And again, this particular company, their, their founder was just it found it too complicated. Um, and she said, well, I'll just use what I've already got, you know, which didn't, which didn't really help after spending it, you know, nearly 20,000 euros worth of, of, of putting all the stuff in in the first place and letting me, letting me build it all into their system. Then because she, for whatever reason or another, didn't like it, couldn't work it, couldn't work it out. Yeah. You know, that, a lot of that, rippled, that rippled back through the organization and all you got was, was resistance, apart from the people who hadn't, who, was, who came in later, who said, oh, this is great. You know, it takes the dog out. It slices bread right. for me in the morning. Whoa, you whoa, know. whoa! Salesforce takes the dog out and slices bread. It does. Get it does. Yeah. Systems. That's awesome. Yeah, ask Charles. He's, he's ask, ask Charles, Stephen. He's written an app for. It, I tell you. No doubt. Apparently, I remember. Listen, we use this stuff, and Financial Force works like Salesforce. There's the APIs, and then there's this, and, and we did all that. Um, like I said, to us, it was very kindergartenish. So the and I can only speak about Financial Force. I've used Salesforce. I like Zoho, um, so I'm not belittling what you guys do i'm just saying i like zoho better i find it's more user friendly and i also find um you can do things quicker with salesforce not anything against what charles does is that i need to hire charles for stuff whereas zoho you know 
I can, I can go, Oh, I want to do this. Oh, okay. And you can pretty much do it. Um, and there's not a lot of heavy lifting. So for me, Zoho, um, I like, but that doesn't mean, you know, everybody likes their own thing. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, everybody wants to, but have the problem the newest, is with these, 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 these lower entry CRMs is they, you know, if you become, you become a victim of your own success, I think. Um, right. And that was my experience that, uh, that the, the more traffic that goes into it, um, people say, well, I wanted to do this and I want to do that, you know, and, and, and as, as the systems got larger and the data kept being poured in either by the telephone or via email or whatever, because if you're picking up stuff from, from your websites and it's, you know, mm -hmm. dumping that into your CRM, it, 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 at a certain point of time, these smaller, and I would say, I'm not saying that Zoho is per se a smaller, a, a, a small company and, I don't think that's that's the fact, but it did start to to creak and groan under the weight of of uh, all the data which is coming in. Yeah, I, th I think it's also the size that you need. Like yeah, when I meet with like if I meet with a Charles and we're going to buy NetSuite or Salesforce or whoever, we sit down and we say, "Here's where we are. Here's where we want to go," and then we do our own research, and then we expect them to come back with recommendations that tell us how stupid we are. Um, and yeah. then that's how, you know, you can find the best product for you, yeah. you know. Is that in, so, is that in your in your pitch deck, uh, Charles? Uh, this is this is the point when I tell the client how stupid he is. Is that how we move, <laughs> how you move forward with it? <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, a little right I mean, text. A, cli a, 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 a client like Stephen would love it because that's the sort of thing. Oh, yeah. I want, to, I want you to be – I need everybody to be – I'm very <laughs> blunt. And when we hire consultants, I'm like, you be blunt. And they don't know what to do with that because – you know, they're so used to tippy toeing around everybody because they don't want to offend them because they'll get fired. And I'm like, hey, we're yeah. stupid. You got to tell us. We only know yeah, what we know. Like, no, yeah. when well, we... Let me ask you this, though, really quickly. And I don't mean to interrupt, but let me just ask this question. Yeah. With AI now coming out, and we'll just talk about Salesforce because this is what you know. In Salesforce, how are they integrating AI into their um, system are they doing anything that's wow this is awesome or is it just you know and i'm being somewhat facetious it's just gemini or chat gpt like oh you will be do well generally the ai available to integrate into systems is pretty much on the level of chat gpt these days okay. so there's yeah. it's not that the salesforce ai is going to become you know skynet or anything crazy like that but it is a really useful layer for just understanding your data better and seeing okay. patterns and easily asking the system to identify things for you. Um, so the their AI version is called Einstein and it's pretty seamlessly integrated into you know, whatever you want to look at. And does it help me make a phone call? Like if, I, if I'm in America and I have to call somebody in Germany, does it translate while live while I'm talking their AI um, or no? I don't think real-time translation is part of it, no. That's too bad because we have yeah. a company that does that. So I always fascinated that people don't have that in their system. But then again, we hold all the patents on that too. Anyway, yeah. um, but um, so, I like I like that because if you have salespeople and you want them to make global phone calls and they don't speak a language, that kind of limits you. And then you have to figure out who you're going to hire, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, going back to the Zoho thing, right? We we've act, like Zoho is really popular. HubSpot is another one that people use instead of yep. Salesforce. Yeah, and, well, I think HubSpot's a bit like the Apple of CRMs. You know, it's like super yeah. hip. Well, yeah, Microsoft, use. Oracle, SAP, Sugar, CRM, HubSpot, Zendesk. Yeah. I've, I've used, wasn't impressed, and Sage. So you know, the first three or four it. cost real money. Cost real money, and then the rest are like, oh, three dollars a user. <laughs> yeah, and it really just comes down to the abilities of the system. So. Yeah. With Salesforce, you have it, it's open ended. There's no limit. You can do anything you want to with it. You can you can plug it into anything. You can build super complex stuff. You can build really nice looking UIs. You, I mean, it'll do anything you want. Um, right. But over the years, so we Charles, have actually, you mean like open ended? You mean so it could have an unlimited amount of users? An unlimited theoretically. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of organizations that have, I think, now 200,000 users in one wow. Salesforce system. Um, yeah. There are challenges when you get up into large amounts of data. And at a certain point, you want to start to put it off into like Amazon Web Services and things. But we're talking like tens or hundreds of millions of records 
it starts wow. to be good to do that. But you know, additionally, you can. It's very easy to do something like spin a uh, customer portal up right on top of your Salesforce instance, and just build a portal on top of what all your internal people are using to manage the data. Um, but when we work with people, again, most of our business comes from referrals from mm -hmm. previous clients and customers. Uh, a lot of we've had a lot of people who left a job, and when they got to their new job, they kind of brought us with them and told their new yeah. job about us and brought us in. That's, a, that's what happened to me. I had, I had one client. I used it myself when, when I was working for somebody, I was employed for somebody, and a couple of other clients that I had, I was doing CRM work for them, and I, I just kind of took it with them. But again, you know, the, these were only for the larger clients. They could afford to spend the money. If not, you know, we're back to the Zoho and, to, you know, HubSpot. Yeah, so we've actually recommended HubSpot to people over the years, and I think Zoho on one occasion, because it just fit what they needed to do better. And we'd yeah. much rather make that person happy and do something good for them and have them come back a year later or two, or maybe never, but you know, recommend us to somebody else and say, hey, we didn't need Salesforce at this company, but maybe this one can use it. So that's cool. Yeah. But you really, it, but it's so, but it's the Salesforce side. So when you do the integration and whatnot, and what you said earlier was very true. I know when we did NetSuite, um, we actually assigned um, a, a customer service rep, our controller, and one other person to be the contact. So when there was an issue, they were like Johnny on the spot. And they got that's why we got it done in three months, which they were like shocked. They were like, you got NetSuite installed in three months? We're like, yeah, why? And they're like, no one does that. Like, it's like six months to 18 months. And we're like, no, nope, three months. And we, mm -hmm. we had real financials. But we just have people assigned to it. So um, I think that's the biggest thing. Like even at Salesforce, yeah. I'm assuming now if we have no company and we're brand new, it's easy. You just set it up, right? Because there's nothing, there's no data. It's like here, here's how you use it, push a button and you're done. But if I've got a company, then that you actually need to have, which I don't think a lot of people understand, one or two or three dedicated people that are going to be there to take your phone call and be there to do whatever they need to do to get from A to Z. Yeah, absolutely. We we do put that in our uh, proposals and things, and we say this is depend. You know, the timeline is dependent on the availability of your people to work with us, because it's very true. Um, yeah. Companies just develop unique cultures and paradigms that they work in, and there's a lot of things that somebody who's been at a company for three or four years will think are just totally normal day to day stuff, but to us, it's a completely right. foreign language. So. Even just at a translation level, we need their involvement for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, you, you, have, you have that. You have that everywhere, don't you? I mean, you know, I probably listen to, listen to a lot of, you know, uh, final, financial experts or whatever, and they all come out with, oh, it's a, it's an ABC or it's a DFE or it's a seven 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 four seven or whatever sort of you know jargon that they throw out that they use every day, and mm -hmm. then they, they expect that the rest of the world knows exactly what they're talking about. Yeah, and, well, I didn't, uh, you know, and software people are the worst people for that. You know, it's all about <laughs> you know ringing this bell and, and pulling that lever. It's well, sorry, I don't even know where the bell is. You know, don't, or what don't a lever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know, it's it's. Um, I think it's, I think it's to do. You know, like people management. First of all, I think you have to learn how to manage people before you can consult with them. Mm -hmm. Well, and from a consulting perspective, you can't assume anything. Uh, I sat in the room <laughs> no. once where. No they want we were discussing how cases should be escalated and uh, this giant argument broke out and about halfway through i realized it was because one side of the room was the call center and they're dealing with technical stuff coming in and they need to escalate it to engineering because it's too complex and the other side of the room was sales and they need to escalate a case to their manager because the customer is unhappy and they were using the term case for both of these things but they were fundamentally different things. And so all they needed to do was work out different terminology and there wouldn't be a conflict, but instead it turned into this gigantic argument for about an hour. Um, you get paid yeah, by the was, hour? At that point, I wasn't. Now I do. <laughs> uh, I'd, be, dude, I'd be like, no, no, I would keep pulling. I'd be like, we get paid by the hour. You guys, listen, you should take the day. We're just going to sit here. Yeah. So, I, we, I mean, you can, those, those are the clients, you kind of bring your own buns. You say, like, I've got a whole box of buns, and you can just throw them at each other for an hour or so, and I'll, and I'll, send, you, I'll, I'll send you the invoice at the end of the day. You can have yeah. the buns for free, you know. 
I mean, we'd rather spend our hour building cool stuff, but you know, if they need to get that out of their system, we're happy to sit there. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. funny. He's like, sure, that's we'll it. charge an hour. We'll sit here for two hours. Now, where's your team located? Are you states based, European based? Where are you? Uh, where are you? I'm assuming most of you guys are remote, right? Yeah, we're all in the U.S. Uh, we have an okay. office, but everybody works remotely. We're spread out across okay. about three or four different states. Um, and there's one guy in Mexico that we've worked with before. Um, we actually used a couple of developers from Ukraine before the war sure. escalated there. For the unpleasantness, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of those guys, I think, are in Poland now. So. Yeah, well, that's where the unpleasantness is heading. They're just, they're just yeah. trying to get ahead of it. Yeah, yeah. You know. uh, which which of course makes our friend Dominic very happy, happy bunny because he's got all these uh, people that are already going to go and work for him. I think. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we're just based in the U.S. Um, we've done work in Europe. We've done work in Asia. We're not really yeah. focused on that from a marketing perspective. We're just looking for U.S. clients and maybe Canada too. At this well, point. Canada, please. They don't even speak English. So, <laughs> when you so if if you get hired, so when someone calls you, tell take us through that process. So if I call you and say I'm thinking about using Salesforce, what's your process for to see if you're a good fit for us, and even if we're even a good fit for Salesforce? Because you may hear, you know, we deal with six people a day, blah 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 blah. And we're, the most we're ever going to have is 250 people in our CRM and you may be like, eh, you probably want to use something else. But it, like, so what's your process to, when you first talk to a client to figure out A, if they are a good client and B, I guess if Salesforce is good for them and then C, you know, take us through all that. Okay. So as a developer, I mean, cause that's where I started out. All I really ever wanted to do was write code. Um, but in order to do that over the years, I started having, having to ask questions back upstream just to figure out what the hell I was supposed to build. And <laughs> so I, I developed a process for doing that. And it's actually based on a book called Use Case Driven Object Modeling with UML, which is oh, yeah, that's great. Sure, we did that the other yeah. night. It's one of yeah. my yeah. favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I've got <laughs> it on the shelf over there. But yeah. bedtime reading for all <laughs> bedtime reading for all nerds, that one. But there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but it's actually a great book and it was written by a couple of guys who had been doing software development for like twenty years or something when they wrote it and they have all kinds of, you know, war stories and anecdotes and things in there. Um <clears throat> but it lays out a process for really understanding, like not getting distracted by all the technical layer questions, but just understanding process wise, what everything means, what it should do for you, uh, what you expect it to do for you and those kind of things. And so from day one, whoever's on the sales call with a customer will start taking notes of the terminology that they use and we'll spend we're not just in there going, hey, hire us, hey, hire us. Um, we'll spend right. some time asking questions and digging deeper into things and uh, listening to them talk to us about what they need and then asking a question where it causes them to basically talk about the same thing, but maybe the, they use different words so we can understand it better. Um, and take notes about all of that. Um, and then we will get a non-disclosure in place if we don't have one already and actually get into some more detail before we put a proposal together. Because one of the things that I've seen that causes a lot of problems for consultants and for customers is that people don't really understand what they're getting into. So they throw a quote out there that they think is going to win the deal. But right. in reality, there might be much, much bigger problems. It might take three or four times as much effort to do what the customer actually needs. Um, and then launch it. If you launch into a project under those conditions, you're just set up for failure from day one. And then it's bad for the consultant, but then it's also bad for the customer because they invested whatever time and money they put into running that unsuccessful project. And now they're just like in the same spot they were, but poorer and with less time. Mm -hmm. So we really like to so dig in. So and, simply, yeah. simply then it's a discovery call you have with your client. You find out where all the pain points are. You think, okay, this is, um, we think we have solutions for that. Then they sign the non disclosure and then you move into the next phase. Yeah. And I'm just you, li yeah. literally lifting up the bonnet and having a look inside. 
Yeah, so it's one or more sort of design calls after the discovery call. Yeah. Um, we have a, a, like an hour cap that we'll allocate to that, but we really want to make sure that we know what we're are you about. Are really you charging the client then at this point? No, no the consultation? Not no, this is all freebie. Yeah. 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 The, yeah so the this, is, this, is your, this is your risk, your entrepreneurial risk now. You're putting time in. Yeah. I mean, it's a risk monetarily for, you know, a handful of hours. I guess, yeah. but really it mitigates a whole lot of our risk in terms of running good projects and having happy clients and really delivering what people need. Um, so then we'll put a proposal together from there. It looks like a pretty, a more standard engagement process. Um, we'll put a statement of work together and things like that. But then we also will do additional design calls and use the use case driven object modeling approach to design out from a functional perspective, not from a technical perspective, but a functional perspective, what people need to do. And the key there is that if you have a good functional design, then it could be implemented in any system. It could be Salesforce, it could be NetSuite, it could be uh, just written in Java from scratch, but the right. functional design would still be consistent and applicable across all of those uh, implementation approaches. And that is usually that's a lot easier for people to understand too, because they can just describe in plain language. Um, you know, when I close an opportunity, here's what should happen, and we document that in a structured way. And then that structure is what we hand to the development team to say we need it to do this, uh, and they take the step of saying here's how we make Salesforce do that. Gotcha. But, yeah, it's and as a developer. Uh, yeah, there's. And basically, two, you sit with someone, you say, so when you talk to a customer, what yeah. happens? And he's going to go, well, I do it, da, 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 da. and you basically are designing, or if you will, making a flow chart. So the developer goes, oh, okay, this is what has to happen to get the Z. And that's it. Yeah, it's a flow chart and then a detailed uh, step by step write up from a user's right. perspective of, you know, user does this, the system responds, right. the user does this. Yeah. And as a developer, you share, that's you actually. Share what that you with need. You? You share that with your client as well, because that's almost like a, you know, like a, you know, an, F, an FAQ for for the user. If I if this mm -hmm. comes in, this is what's going to happen. You say, oh, or you don't let them see all the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's critical that they develop it with us, and we share yeah. it throughout the entire project. And then you're right. I always say we, if you do it right, then at the end you have about eighty percent of your user documentation already. Already done. You need yeah, to take that step-by-step step stuff and clean it up and put some screenshots in there. Um, but yeah, you're building your documentation throughout the project. Yeah, yeah, no, that's incredibly handy. You know, because uh, still as a culture, you know, we're all, most most of people of a certain age have learned something from a book, and so that you know that when when push comes to shove, people you know got half a brain cell will go and look try and look for documentation about how to move forward. Yeah. When I say what, what about are you talking about people like the like at a certain age above, below? Are you talking about like the little like the twenty year olds don't have a clue? Is that what you're trying to say, Dave? You just trying to be polite or no, well I was, I was I, <laughs> the thing that the thing that flashed through my brain, I saw something which was kind of a little bit off topic, but um something flashed through uh, uh, yesterday on LinkedIn. It was a system yeah. called I think iOS eighteen, I think, or whatever. And yeah. you could you could lit you could write onto this tablet two plus two equals and it would automatically give you the answer 26 and then if you, everybody knows this. exactly yeah. exactly and you could put yeah and you could put um all sorts of uh, very complex uh, algebra in it and it would work it all out for you and you could also wow. uh, you just just click on it and it would give you graphs and everything etc etc so there is going to be a generation of, of people um well my, my first thought was you know i, I was rubbish at math it's probably why i went into sales but um you know what? Why would why would you have to ever have to learn anything anymore if that if that is the case? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. So there is there's a generation of people who are coming up who literally will just go, um, push that button, rang that bell, question mark, and they will see an AI generated answer to that question mm -hmm. in relationship to the to to the CRM. That's yeah. that's yeah. And you can use the documentation to feed into an AI. To provide answers yeah, or to give that, yeah. 
you know, it's handy for people doing support to take a snippet of whatever your documentation is and send it to somebody who didn't go and actually read the documentation. But yeah, it also just the, the, the first thing I first thing I ever learned about sales was you know RTFM. Huh? So that's what we used to say to most of our clients. RTFM, sir. <laughs> yeah, is, exactly. Which, yeah. Yeah, in IT, the first thing we learned is unplug it and plug it back in. Yeah. That's yeah. universal troubleshooting, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had, I had an American friend when, when we first started playing around with computers. It was like control, control, alt, hammer. So, <laughs> so he he got through probably about six or seven uh, keyboards in the very early days. You know, we were programming on Apple of on apricot computers, not Apple computers, apricot computers, and the acorns. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, so you had you know one one typing fault, and it would all go tits up. And it was just driving him absolutely crazy. So he just he literally had a hammer and just smashed the keyboard. So yeah. Yeah. I worked in a computer shop building computers in nineteen ninety five and there was Oh, so you had him you had he, he was in there every week then in your shop. Probably, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we used to, we got the first computer we had was the Radio Shack one that used the cassette tape that you could type yeah, yeah. into. That's yeah. the first one that yeah, you wrote code. It's the only thing they had. And we yeah. had that, Co and then the, 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 the cow one really was good. Gateway. Wasn't the Gateway the guys with the cow, the, the, cow, the yeah. black and white yeah. Gateway? Yeah. That's right. Those, yeah. were, those were good. And then a buddy of mine, when Heathkit was around, built his own computer because Heathkit, for the people that don't remember it, would sell you. You could build anything from a television set to a car to a computer to an atomic bomb. But you could build whatever you want from Heathkit. And they would just send it to you. And, you know, you buy a soldering iron and you would do it. And he built his own little computer, which is good. And, you know, that was it. So, and the rest of the yeah, history, everybody knows who Steve Jobs is. I'm just kidding. So. I mean, Dell, Dell was just slightly slightly better than that. They, they gave you just a, a bigger box with more with more finished parts in originally. So you could just sort of build it all out. But I and remember the, TR, Dell is today. The, TR, the TRS-80. That was the one that um, from, from Radio Shack. I got a job. Another anecdote. I got a job. Um, I spoke very, very poor Dutch when I uh, after I'd been in Holland for about six months, and I used to walk past the at the, the Radio Shack store. It was called Tandy's here because it was Radio Shack was used by something else. So in Europe, it was called Tandy, uh, which was also the, the, the one of the product names. And I, I used to walk past this shop, and I just like you know looking in the window and all this stuff. And at a certain point in time, this guy came. Past, he said, "You walk past here every week." So I used to walk back from a cleaning job that I had, and I said, "Yeah, I said, you know, like uh, I will see what you've got in your window. It's all new and everything." He said, "Oh, he said, you, you know what it is then?" So I said, "Yeah, I, said, I know what it is." So I said, I "Used to work for Tandy's in the UK." He said, "Oh, come indoors," and within within a day, I was then their 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 um, tech support. Because they had <laughs> selling all this stuff, all this stuff in in Tandy stores in Holland, but of course all the documentation was in English, and so nobody could read it. Nobody even knew how to set one up to get it to run the demo in the shop. So that so that was my little uh, my, my claim to fame. There you go. Well, look at you, nice. you're famous. Yeah, in my own bathroom. Yeah. Well, you know, you gotta be famous somewhere. So, Charles, tell us what else we should know about you. You're below. You could see um, on our little ticker take that Charles's website is um, is there. So, if you want to reach out to Charles and have him help you with your Salesforce installation, or I guess if you have questions, or if you have Salesforce and you need it to get bigger, Charles and his group can help you out with that. So, Charles, what else should everybody know about you other than you probably charge a lot of money? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> our rates are about market average. Um, okay. Yeah, we also do our, have do our listeners program. get like a ten percent discount or something? Like if they say I saw you on two old parts, you can give them a discount or something. No. Or what? Like make it worth their while to reach out to you. <laughs> um, you think no, but we we do <laughs> offer we do offer discounts for nonprofits for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. All our clients like are nonprofits, even if they're yeah, all our clients. Are, yeah, all, all our viewers are nonprofits. All our <laughs> that's right. All our viewers. Yeah, like they're all our viewers are like Gold, so. Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan. Those are nonprofits. Yeah, that's how I look at yeah. that. So yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, we have a referral program, obviously, because referrals are important to us. And right. we just changed it to just mirror what 300 devs is doing, where uh, for the first referral, we'll pay 5%. For the second, we'll pay 6 For the third, we'll pay 7 up to 15% to whoever the person is that referred us for anything that turns into an actual project. Yeah. Um, and this, yeah. this is a monthly payment, I take it, Charles? Is that what you're talking about now? 
Yep, it'd be a monthly payment and it's a percentage of our gross billing for the project. So oh, wow. there's yeah, no like net profit awesome. mumbo jumbo in there. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah it's all net profit to you, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I it's wish we pay our developers side. pretty well. Um, really? Oh yeah. This is why we use I, monkeys on our side. Yeah. yeah. Bananas are cheap. Yeah. So we yeah. have that, and then we just finished building an App Exchange app, and I'm working on oh, getting nice. the listing published. Um, we're hoping to have that completely published by September. And September 16th is the Dreamforce conference, like the big Salesforce conference. Okay. But what our app does is it sits on top of Salesforce reports, and David might um, might understand the benefit of this. But basically, you select any report you want to in the system, and this app does some simple analytics on top of it and does a frequency analysis of all the different values. So it makes it really easy to identify um, you know, bad data where people aren't filling in fields or to see mm -hmm. things like, 30% of my address values say US and 40% of them say USA and that kind of thing. Yeah. And oh, wonderful. Okay, something, something to clean up the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and then it makes it, holes. Yeah. it makes it really easy to uh, just point and click and refilter the report data. It also, it also makes, of course, uh, you'd be able to resell the data to a third party a lot easier because it's nice and clean the other end. But of course, you, <laughs> yeah. never th you, you never thought about that, Charles, of course, when you were building the app, I'm sure. No, we were thinking more of like sales managers and you know call center managers oh, and people like that who are they're rubbish. They're who are trying to control the chaos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, good luck with that. It's like herding cats. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's based nice, on nice nice clean data. I mean, yeah, people pay a lot of money for that. Mm -hmm. So uh... Yeah, we built that based on yeah, some did. things that we saw at some of our clients where they could have used an app like that, but they didn't really have the budget or the time to pay us to build it for them individually. So we rolled yeah. out this app exchange right. app, and now we can offer it to them on that level. And so. then this will go into, into the third party uh, store or, by, or the, third, well, the, the store as such by, uh, by Salesforce. Yep. So, yeah. Very cool. And is it going to be a freeware to start off with then? Or is that, or, so, uh, no, it's ten dollars per user per month for who, okay. whatever user is actually using the app. It's not one of those models right. where it's like you got yeah. two hundred in your org. Yeah, it's just whoever yeah. is using it. Okay. So every so every user would have to would have to log in so you'd see that how many users are actually using it. Mm -hmm. Or is it work? Does it work on an honesty policy? <laughs> <laughs> um. It's a little bit of an honesty policy. We're going to have to yeah. monitor. Oh, that's great. 10,000 employees, three people <laughs> using. I yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see, and people wonder where people wonder where, where, you know, data breaches come from, you know. But we don't <sighs> want to get into data free. breaches. It's an article that every social security number has been stolen. So, like, yeah. Oh, so, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. You know, we're, you know. Listen, we're going to get them back at some point after we use them. So, yeah, um, but, but yeah, you know, I mean, the North Koreans are having fun with it, aren't they? They're probably, they're probably well, using listen, it. Listen, they got to buy things. They need stuff. They need yeah. to buy Salesforce and hire Charles with fake social yeah. security numbers. I like it. They're just there breaking them in a little bit. <laughs> there you go. They want to use them on <laughs> bank loans and cars. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. They, need a, they need a loan before they can buy Salesforce. Yeah. So, well, Charles, mm -hmm. thank you so much. We're glad you, uh, thank you can make it and tell everybody about Salesforce. And if you want to reach out to Charles, as you can see through the little ticker tape below, there's his website. You can tell me yeah. you've heard him on 2OF Entertainment. Um, it'll do nothing for us and probably nothing for you. But you'll get a great developer that'll get you from A to Z um, and get you through Salesforce. And if you don't need Salesforce, it sounds like they'll tell you that it's too big for you. Um, and then you can contact Monkeys R Us and we'll send you some monkeys and bananas yeah. and you can use them instead. Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's all, it sounds like Charles is an honest broker. And that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, well, that's it came through honest. Dominic. You know what I'm saying? It came through the Time yeah. and Era or Time and Era, yeah. whatever the hell his title yeah. is this week. No, so, yeah. Well, so, yeah. I know you like to call him the Time and Era. I like Time and Era better than Time and Era. Time and yeah. Era I like Time and Era. Yeah. I'm going to start yeah, take him time in there. I'm no, like, don't worry. He did. I mean, yeah, I mean, Dominic, he really liked Stephen calling him the, the Timinator. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. You can watch all those shows. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you want to wind him up, that's the way to go. Charles, yes, thank you so much for being part of the hello to the Timinator when you speak to him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I Charles, thank you so much for being part of 2OF uh, Classics. Thank you. Um, hope we haven't, uh, we haven't slapped you around too much. 
Uh, stay with us until after the credits because there's always a little bit of uh, housework uh, to do. Uh, it's me. I'm done today. So um, that's okay. it. Don't forget to subscribe and like everybody and catch all our shows on our channel. And if you want, go to our podcast, which is Two Old Farts Making Noises, and just look for the show that you like and the title, and you're good to go. We'll see everybody uh, when we see you. Dave, take us yeah. home. Right. Thank you, Another guys. Another close. Another Cheers, close. Everybody.